Episode 7 opens with our team of idiots on their way towards a training quest out of town. Puzzlingly, this is treated as some sort of grand parade. The entire Lingarf has come to see them off, which means this same test happens each year, on the same day, and is promoted as an event that people may come to see. These brats walking through town on their way to a field trip. This fantasy world filled with omnicapable magic has the most easily impressed people in existence. And as per usual, we are treated to the most inane dialogue imaginable right out of the gate. If this show has nailed down something consistently, it's how to make me wince from the futility of it all. Someone was paid to write this. I've already pointed out the as you know style of writing, but it bears mentioning again, since this show keeps repeating this fuck up. This is not how people talk. The kid has no reason to say this right now, at this specific moment, when the camera, aka us, the audience, just so happen to be focused on him. There is no connecting conversation, nothing leads to this statement, it's awkward, it's unnatural, it's the most amateurish type of info dumping, stop doing this. And what makes this extra insulting? The info given isn't even something of substance. Every year there's a new mission? So what? Who cares? What does that add to the narrative? If anything, it sprouts further questions. Why is there a different quest each year? Wouldn't the same test be the most consistent measure of skill? It's not like there's need to change it for the sake of surprise. Nobody's gonna take the test more than once. They are either gonna graduate, or they are dead. Are they cheering or trying to scare us? That cave has barely swallowed up a bushel of kids. There's your answer. Uh, a bushel? The cave eats students? <gasps> that sounds like a good adventure! Caves don't eat. They're sideways holes made of rocks. That is blatant vertical cave phobia coming from Fime. Caves need not be horizontal, they can just as easily lead downwards. A pit cave, if you will. You know, the kind of place this show should be dumped into. Come on, the episode is called The Cave of Vinka. The entire goal is to learn all about that hole. I will not tolerate such misinformation about caves spread so brazenly. Good luck, darlings! If you die in there, I'm keeping your stuff! <laughs> Thanks, Red Bud! Don't fret. Townsfolk always come out to freak out the first years. We're not in mortal danger. I'm 80% sure of that. Uh, only 80%? That's right, Zinnia. The cave's a real death trap. You've heard the legends. All of Redbud's clothes are from students who plunge to their death. <laughs> okay, so which 14-year-old students, most of whom are half the height of this cackling crone, own spinster robes in her size? See what I mean? Most of the time this show and its dialogue is lame and unnatural, but this episode has suddenly kicked everything into overdrive. Not a single line these characters drool out of their worthless mouths makes any kind of sense. And the show really wants us to know that this exercise will indeed be extremely dangerous. The stakes are high, people may die, it's a true trial by fire, a make or break test for the freshman class. And the way the show goes about this, is by having the characters treat the death of youngsters as fun and quirky. How is this supposed to weed out the weak ones? They're all a big old herd of cowards. They're scared because the cave is miles deep, and monsters have risen from the depths. The mission is meant to challenge them, but it also forces them to challenge themselves. Boring! I miss the days when we used to just throw them in lava. We never did that. Right, of course not. <laughs> this constant jokey tone towards serious topics like this simply feels wrong. The crazy potion teacher is one thing, 
but now everyone's in on it. It's stupid, not funny, only reveals how immature the writers are. You cannot make a serious narrative about warriors whose literal goal is to guard the realm and the lives of their fellow men while doing this semi-self-aware LOL, we are totally having a D&D &D quest in a dungeon for real Z's. It's gonna be like filled with monsters and stuff and you will probably die. Isn't this fun? Routine. It's not amusing. It makes everyone look like sociopaths. Stop it. The cave of Vinca is a wondrous and ancient maze in which mysteries and monsters await you. As do maiming, mauling, and malediction if you're not careful. Remember, when you see the walls fall in and your throat Enough! flows... None of us should be going in there! Why would any of you choose to walk into this nightmare? Um, because we want to be guardians. Well, ho, Zinnia, going for the old voluntary expulsion. That is wild! Go for it! Don't you at least want to stay and find out what our quest is going to be? No, no! I'm too young and way too attractive for a suicide mission! Good on you. Save yourself. You, my dear lassie, have just made the best decision in your life. Get yourself a proper education, some place that isn't run by malicious miscreant morons. You are young, all the doors are open to you, and you should respect yourself enough not to take this kind of shit. You are officially the smartest character in High Guardian Spice. Not exactly a genius, you should have packed your bags after that forceful French kissing flora fiasco. But still, a character showcasing realistic human reaction to anything is such a breath of fresh air. Sadly, this also means that my new favorite character will no longer show up. Farewell Xenia, the girl with great aspirations, attending both the blacksmith and magician classes. Even though those are two different tracks, this curriculum makes no sense. And speaking of things that make no sense, this girl is at two places at the same time. Look at this, that's the same character. These classes take place at the exact same time in episode 2. And she's yet another character who supposedly attends both smithing and magic classes. I swear, everyone just does whatever. That whole expo dump Parsley gave about the different study tracks was complete waste. Where was I again? Oh, right, the farewells. Anyway, I wish you all the best. May you find happiness. Maybe someplace close to the Grove of Flying Pokemon Rodents? The other best characters in the show? Back to the main topic at hand. The student's mission is to head into the cave and collect a vial of magical healing water. There is a cave that anyone can simply march into that has unguarded fountains of magical healing water just sitting there, going unused. And it's not just some mild tonic, oh no, as we shall discover, it is quite the potent beverage. Is there a reason why the cave isn't fitted with a pipeline harvesting this miracle remedy for hospitals and the like? Other than it's yet another random magical bullshit plot device that is only brought up when it's convenient for the plot. Um, Professor Hakone, I have a question. Hmm, go ahead. Can the spring, the, um, the healing waters, what do they heal? Could they heal a tree? Yes, yes I suppose it could. That is an interesting question, Fime. Why do you ask? Is there some kind of natural disaster threatening to engulf the world? Maybe at the backyard of the academy? Should we be worried? Maybe do something about it? Concentrating all our efforts into harvesting the water and distributing it to all the locations affected by the rot? Of course, everyone in this show is a goddamn moron, so no one asks the obvious follow-up questions. Because we don't want the conflict actually resolved, even though there is a painfully simple solution to everything. Hey, Time, did you ask about healing trees for botany homework? No. Hmm, did you ask so that they'd tell us why they need it? I think we're here. Sage, you were there when Fime discovered the rot tree, you unimaginably dim-witted skittle brain. 
You should know exactly why she's interested. You didn't ask about the tree then. You forgot about it the second the screen faded to the next scene. But now you are suddenly asking questions. Because this is the episode where Fym will eventually spill the beans to the rest of the girls. So now it's okay to bring it up. I have never seen a show where characters act this artificially and only in the service of the current plot. So the test itself is set up idiotically. All the students are given a map to the fountain, yet everyone heads in different directions. Which means that most of the students don't know how to read a map properly. What the fuck is the school teaching these nitwits? The obstacle course was supposed to be training for the cave trip. But what exactly did the students learn? Climbing? Walking in a maze? With a compass? But without a map? Solving slide tile puzzles? Which of these is supposed to be useful inside this cave? It is a dungeon leading down in gentle slopes and staircases. At what point would you need to climb or solve goddamn tile puzzles? Also, the dungeon apparently gets more dangerous the lower it goes, with named levels indicating the intensity of danger posed by monsters. These maps show the caves and corridors down to level 3, where you will find the spring of healing waters. There are uncounted levels below and more springs, each with more concentrated magic, but protected by monsters. Below level 3, the risk level exceeds your training. This is some utterly absurd video game logic. There is no reason why the threat level of beasts would be consistently increasing going downward. They are creatures with their own goals and desires. They do whatever they please. It is not their job to huddle up in different parts of a dungeon according to their capability to fuck up an adventurer. That makes no sense. Using the mechanical side of video games or tabletop RPGs as a basis for world building is cringe. It never sounds natural, it never feels natural. Games usually have a numerical progression system, because it's easy to understand mechanically, and it simulates the feeling of growth. And the developers craft more and more intense encounters as the quest progresses, because consistently increasing challenge is satisfying. Games have to follow somewhat rigid rules to be functional. There are ways to make mechanics feel less gamey. But at the end of the day, it is the player's job to forgive the silly gaminess when immersing in the experience. But this is not a video game, it's supposed to be a naturally functioning fantasy world, with laws of nature not dissimilar to real life. Using the logic of games in non-interactive stories is always immersion breaking. And the cave itself feels like a collection of video game levels mushed together. It's just a bunch of stuff, with no cohesion whatsoever. There's a tunnel with roots, man-made temples, a random house for giants, crystal caverns, all right next to one another. Random stuff in a sequence inside a hole is not world building. There is no place in existence that functions like this. Even in fantasy, there needs to be a reason behind locations. We never learn anything substantial about Vinka, the deity the dungeon is named after, other than that she was apparently a huge cunt. That is Vinka. She liked to crash parties and turn her suitors into wine. And drink them. Weird way to spend your time. No, Fime. It's not weird. It's absolutely disgusting. But that was supposed to be a callous joke, of course. People dying is funny. I'm guessing all her suitors were of the male variety. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.